It probably wouldn't surprise you if I told you that I have no GMOs in my garden. As it's commonly understood, that's true. But a lot of the plants I'm growing, especially these right here, are genetically modified organisms. There's a lot of confusion and a lot of fear about it. So join me today as I discuss GMOs in the home garden. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and right up front, you don't need to be concerned about GMOs in the home garden. Generally, the term GMO has a bad rap. By definition, as the U.S. Department of Agriculture looks at it, GMO, a genetically modified organism, is any organism that is produced through genetic modification. That includes what happens in the laboratory and traditional breeding practices of farmers and gardeners. These tomatoes that are behind me, the Sweet 100s and the Sun Gold, are hybrids. They were produced by taking two different types of tomato plant and cross-pollinating them to get a new hybrid. That's genetic modification, and it's been done for centuries. A GMO plant results through intentional cross-pollination, but it can also result through accidental cross-pollination. If you're growing a couple different types of squash in your garden and they cross-pollinate and you save those seeds and then plant those seeds, well, the result will be a genetically modified organism. In that case, it's probably the honeybees in your garden that did the manipulation. It's when people get involved with genetic manipulation that most people start getting worried, specifically when it's those laboratory techs working for a big corporation that are injecting genes from one species into genes of a completely different type of species. When we talk about that type of manipulation, it's better to refer to it as genetically engineered organisms, or as more and more countries around the world are agreeing to the terminology, it's bioengineering. It's the genetic engineering of plants that makes all the news. Even though you know it as a GMO, now think of it as a genetically engineered organism. In 2020, the Food and Drug Administration reported that 92% of the corn grown commercially in the United States is genetically engineered. 94% of the soybeans are genetically engineered. 96% of the cotton is genetically engineered. And since 2013, 95% of canola is genetically engineered. And when it comes to sugar beets, 99.9% .9 of those crops are genetically engineered. And so why is all this genetic engineering happening in the first place? Now remember, it's at the commercial level where we have miles and miles of fields growing the same type of plant. So when something happens to affect those plants, it can devastate all of the fields. Some of the plants are being developed to be resistant to glyphosate. You might know that as Roundup. That's a very common herbicide used in fields. It'll kill all of the weeds, but it won't kill those genetically engineered plants. There are plants that are being developed that are resistant to drought, and those plants are being grown in parts of the world where the rainfall is decreasing. I've recommended Bacillus thuringiensis, Bt, as a treatment on plants that are being devastated by caterpillars. Well, there's a corn that's been genetically engineered to include the Bt within the plant. So it kills those insects that eat the plant, but it doesn't kill the kinds of insects that don't eat plants, like ladybugs. The papaya industry in Hawaii was almost wiped out, but a genetically engineered papaya that is resistant to ring spot virus 
has revolutionized the Hawaiian papaya industry and the farming has rebounded as a result of it. So when you see all of the benefits that genetically engineered plants bring, you might immediately assume that it's done across the board with all of the different plants that we're growing. But that's not the case. The Agricultural Marketing Service, part of the USDA, tracks every approved genetically engineered plant in the world. In their list of bioengineered plants, there are only 12 types of plant around the world. And of those 12, most are plants that you probably aren't going to be growing in your garden, like cotton and alfalfa and sugar beets. And you're probably not growing canola or the field corn at a commercial level. There are really only four plants that I think you could conceivably grow in the home garden that's identified as being bioengineered. And it's not the most popular garden plants that have been bioengineered. Tomatoes, peppers, and cucumbers don't make the list. Melons and winter squash haven't been bioengineered. Lettuce, spinach, Swiss chard, beets, parsnips, turnips, they're not on the list either. Remember, we're talking about the types of plants that are being grown at the industrial scale. It's the corporate agriculture that's paying for it. So those are the kind of plants. And that's why we're limited to just four types that you could conceivably consider growing in your garden. I'm growing a number of different fruit trees in my gardens. When it comes to fruit trees, there's only one type that is bioengineered. It's an apple. Actually, it's only three trademarked varieties of an Arctic apple, and they're not available for home sale currently. That means if you're growing fruit trees of any type, it's not going to be bioengineered. It's not genetically engineered. It's not a GMO. I recently harvested the eggplant that I had growing in this bed, and eggplant is on the list of bioengineered plants. One type in Bangladesh. If you live anywhere but Bangladesh, you're not going to find bioengineered eggplant in the store or available for sale. When it comes to zucchini, like these plants, you might find that and other summer squashes like yellow squash and crookneck squash. In the United States, it makes the list. In very small amounts, it's being grown. Less than 2,500 total acres in the United States. So you might live in an area where you could buy it in the store, but you're not gonna be able to buy the seeds or the plants for a home garden. I'm growing some potatoes in my greenhouse. Potatoes also make the list of bioengineered plants, but just a few varieties and again at very small levels within the United States and only at the commercial level. You're not going to find seed potatoes that have been bioengineered. Sure, it's possible if you live in one of those areas and you buy those potatoes and then plant them in your garden, you have bioengineered potatoes. To be safe, if you're at all concerned, make sure you're only buying organic seed potatoes. To be certified organic, it's required to have no bioengineering. The reason I know about these specific varieties and their availability is because I checked out the list that the Agricultural Marketing Service monitors, and I'll put a link to it below. A number of governments around the world are taking this very seriously when they're monitoring the plants that are being produced that wouldn't normally be produced in nature. Within the United States, it's the Food and Drug Administration, it's the U.S. Department of Agriculture, it's the Environmental Protection Agency, all of whom are monitoring the development and the approval of these types of plants. And that whole process of developing a bioengineered plant and then getting it approved takes a lot of time and a lot of money, which is why it's currently only being done 
for industrial agriculture. It's not being done for home gardeners. We already have plenty of seeds. We don't want GMOs and we don't need GMOs. But you hear companies all the time talk about how they are non-GMO and they're going to stay that way. There are more and more seed companies that are signing the Safe Seed Pledge, saying that they aren't and never will sell GMOs. Well, currently, that's really nothing more than a marketing ploy. They're playing in to the hysteria that a lot of gardeners have about GMOs. GMO being the same term as bioengineered. And as I've already pointed out, there are no bioengineered seeds available for the home gardener. And by definition, as the USDA defines it, they are selling seeds like Sweet 100 and Sun Gold. Those have been genetically modified. So I encourage you not to get wrapped up in the hysteria. I encourage you to learn a little bit more and click on some of the links that I have below and to recognize that you're safe from GMOs. You're safe from genetically engineered organisms. You're safe from the bioengineered seeds that are being used, but not for gardeners like you and me. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.